I don't feel comfortable with, with the idea of finishing one painting and put it aside and then uh, and start with the next like an, on an assembly line. I, I, it's important for me to keep the, all the works open as long as possible and also to see them as one piece but uh, with the fragments here and there and uh, it's also a way to uh, to let the paintings be acquainted to each other when i started in art schools and preparation courses it was all very like traditional we had to make um, uh, drawings of uh, croquis and uh, still lives and such and but then when i started the academy i knew that academy in, in Göteborg had a more progressive uh, and it was uh, it was already like Postmodernism was being introduced, and so I had. I remember for the for the, the first year, I had the idea of uh, artists following uh, some kind of progress. So it's you start start out off with drawing and painting, and then you, I'll naturally move on to video and installation, and so. But it it really didn't happen there. I got in a way stuck in the sticky oil paint and I, I couldn't resist it and uh, so it, it was uh, I think it, that kind of resistance that uh, at that moment those years um, uh, painting wasn't really valued and it was considered uncool but uh, but I, I still I remained so it's funny that Nowadays, I, I try. I'm, I still consider myself, of course, a painter. But I have noticed that I'm sometimes moving out of the boundaries of painting into the exhibition space. And so, and I, I think I remember also like the first year at, at the academy. I, I had this like old fashioned uh, old school conflict between figurative and an abstract and uh, I, I kind of uh, kind of uh, felt that I, I should make a decision if I should go that way or the other way and and also encouraged by different professors one professor that that really was uh, interested in my abstract work and and an, another one encouraging my my figurative work and uh, and that was difficult but i think it it, it was helpful helpful for me to 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 being being in a way stuck between those two poles I'm interested in the concept of dreams and I've been thinking a lot about it but uh, it's also for me it's important to emphasize that I don't use my own dreams I, I would never be interested in making illustration of uh, of interesting dreams I had but I I, I guess maybe it comes from uh, the writer Borges, or uh, uh, I read uh, one of his lectures when he's talking about the nightmare and uh, his way of thinking and writing in a, like this labyrinthic way. And so he's, he's ending up maybe talking more about dreams than nightmares, but he, he's really into the the literal uh, aspect of dreams and the, the narrative and, and the way that the dreamer has to construct the dream after it's, after it's been dreamt. 
So I'm, I, I, really, I, I, I do uh, work in a similar way, I would say, and, and find inspiration not from the subject, perhaps, but from the structure and the colors of a dream and the texture, if you could say that, of, of a dream. I sometimes get questions about my relationship to surrealist movement, and I think it actually, maybe my interest in that came maybe more from like popular culture, like record covers of Pink Floyd or 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 also like the, the Mad magazine that um, the, the figure of. Uh, uh, Alfred E. Neumann, the character on every cover, and the, and the, and the surrealist, uh, his surrealist approach to, to everyday life. And I also think I was in the exact right age to be affected by it, because it was still, I was so young, so I was still, there was a rip as, uh, uh, as much as, as I was attracted to it. So, and I think that goes as a theme when I, when I think of what I'm doing myself and uh, how I look at things, uh, the, the tension be between uh, what's nice and what's ugly. I, th I think a lot of music, actually, when I work, I, I, I often have something on uh, in my studio, and uh, it's as an aim to, in a way, sometimes distract, distract me from my own thoughts and what I'm doing, but at the same time emphasizing and making more, me more concentrated. And, and uh, I like to think of it from different angles and one could be like the composition of a of a song I, I, I feel resemblance with working with painting and making a comp composition in painting and also in a way sometimes because in my paintings I do like maybe out of uh, lack of fantasy I can't always uh, come up with an with a new theme or um, or space for each painting, so I repeat myself, and then it's comforting to think about music and uh, uh, a piece of music where uh, the same theme comes back again, and the, the, the chorus is in the, in the beginning and in the middle and the end, so it resonates with the, the way I think of composition, whether it's a single painting or, or paintings in a, together in a show, for example. The process in my studio is often when I start out with working for an exhibition, I, of course I have to start with, if it's an empty studio, I have to start with one painting, but uh, uh, I'm also impatient, so so after a while I, I put that aside and, uh, and start working on the next one and, and eventually I have like 20 paintings and none of them are done because I, I don't really, I don't feel comfortable with, with the idea of finishing one painting and put it aside and then uh, and start with the next like an, on an assembly line. I, I, it's important for me to keep the, all the works open as long as possible and also to see them as one piece but uh, with fragments here and there and uh, it's also a way to, uh, to let the paintings be acquainted to each other. The, the characters in my paintings, they move back and forth with, with my help, I, I move a portrait from one panel to the other, testing uh, different possibilities. For a long time I was making painting in a material-wise, more traditional way with uh, oil on canvas. And uh, at some point I got really interested in, uh, in the architectural aspect of the motives, uh, making 
like interiors, for example. But uh, then when I wanted a, a figure to enter into a painting, uh, instead of deciding uh, he or she should stand here in the middle of the room, I'm, I made a, sp a small drawing and cut it out with scissors so I could play around with it on the, on the surface of the painting just to, to test where the, where's the ideal position. But uh, doing that, I realized that that very part was very interesting for me. So I, uh, then that, that got me going and starting making works like that. So in, instead of paper, I had uh, like wooden panels and a saw had to cut out the, the different pieces. And also, also allowed me to to work with the space in another way, in a very like simplified uh, 3D way. When I, because the, it's for some reason it's very important for me with the, the different layers and levels of the objects in my painting that there is a flat back background and uh, something hovering on top of it, but on with a, and something else besides, on, but on a slightly different level, level, a few centimeters higher perhaps, or lower. So. I do think a lot of uh, like the idea and concept of theater uh, when I, I work. Um, I, like, I like the, the idea of um, the limited space of a stage and the stage set and the actors and the, the director in the, in the background and also the prompter, the, the guy or girl hidden for the audience to whisper the lines. And it's all make-believe in a way, but it can be so convincing. So I, I come back constantly to, to, to that whole thing when I, I do my paintings and also installations. But I've, I've had a few uh, questions and proposals to do theater sets, or, but um, the, the right uh, occasion hasn't occurred, but I, but I also a little bit uh, reluctant or because I'm interested in the fact that it's not theater, but it's like mimicking it. So as, as for now, I like to keep it that way.